something you don't hear people brag about every day? I've got worms. You may know about composting using kitchen scraps and leaves in your backyard. But another kind of composting is vermicomposting, which uses worms. Worms are great pets to have. They're not that cuddly, but they work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, turning your kitchen scraps like vegetable peelings, banana peels, coffee grinds, and filters into great fertilizer for your garden. There are many ways you can have your own worm composting bin. There are many systems on the market, ready-made and ready to go, and you can get one of those or you can build your own really inexpensively. And this is a great thing to do with kids because kids love worms. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to make your own. You'll need a tote that you can get from any home improvement store or super center. You want to make sure it has a lid and you want to make sure that it is a solid color, not see-through because worms don't like light. If you'll notice, there's not a lot of light getting down into the soil in your garden, so they like it nice and dark. Then you'll need to drill holes in the sides. This is to make sure you've got good air circulation. The next thing you're going to need are those foam packing peanuts that we all have too many of. And this is a great way to recycle them. And you're going to put these on the bottom and that's just going to provide a space to allow air to circulate for the worms. And then you're going to need some sort of screening. This is hardware cloth, but you could easily use landscape fabric or window screen, just whatever you might have around the house. And you want to put this on top of the peanuts to keep them in place. Next, we're going to add shredded newspaper. The newspaper makes excellent bedding for the worms. And you want to get it moist because they like a moist environment, but not too moist. So you just shred it, you dip it in water, squeeze out the excess water, and then prepare a nice fluffy bed for the worms. You can use colored paper, but don't use glossy paper, the slick glossy ads that come with your newspaper. That's not good for the worms. Once you've got about six inches of newspaper in your tote, now it's time to add some garden soil and a little compost. This will help introduce some beneficial microorganisms that the worm need, and it'll help speed up the composting process. Now the next thing we're gonna need is food, and you can use a variety of kitchen scraps. You can use old cabbage and lettuce, eggshells, coffee grounds and filters, just whatever you have in the kitchen. And then you're going to add this in to feed the worms. Once you put the food in your worm composting bin, then you want to add another layer of moist newspaper. This will help stop any odors from forming and it'll also keep from attracting unwanted pests. Once you've got that done, it's time to add the worms. And you can get worms in a variety of places. You can get them at bait shops. You can even order them online. Or if you have a friend with a worm composting bin, ask her for some. Everybody loves to share. The best worms to use in your vermicomposter are red wigglers. And those aren't the ones that are found in your garden. Those are called night crawlers, and they're bigger than the red wigglers. And red wigglers won't survive in your regular soil because they need a lot of organic material like kitchen scraps. And once that's completed, it's time to put the lid on them and find them a home. Worms like to be in the dark, so it really doesn't matter where you put them. You can put them in a closet, you can put them in your laundry room, or you can put them outside. But the one thing you need to be really, really careful with is you cannot let any sunshine get on your worm farm. Because this is plastic, if it sits in the sun, it will get hot and bake your worms. So you really don't want to do that. Um, you can put them in the garage in the winter time, any place that won't be exposed to the most extreme elements. In a few short months, depending on how many worms you started with, you'll have nutrient-rich castings, which is just a fancy word for poop. Use these castings in your garden. They won't burn your plants. They're high in hummus, which stimulates plant growth and helps control harmful pathogens in your garden. 
And if you don't want to make your own worm composting bin, you can buy one ready to go. And there are a number of different models on the market, and this is the one that I use, and it's called, appropriately enough, the can of worms. My can of worms has three tiers of trays that make it easy to harvest the castings once the worms have turned the food into compost. Start with your first tray and using cocoa fibers or newspapers, make a nice home for the worms, just like we did in the other bin. Then, as the worms eat the food and fill it up with compost, prepare another tray and place it on top. The holes in the bottom of the tray allow the worms to migrate up into the new tray and start eating the food in there. Once they've migrated out of the lower tray completely, remove the castings for use in the garden. The castings can be put directly on the soil, worked into new plantings, or my personal favorite, dissolved in a bucket of water. This makes compost tea and you pour it directly over the plants. They'll absorb the nutrients and it'll also help control diseases like powdery mildew, pests like aphids, and other problems in your garden. If there were any worms left in your castings, they'll sink to the bottom of the bucket. And once you've poured the water off, you can just grab the worms and throw them back in your compost bin. So go out and get some worms and start your own worm farm and help me promote global worming. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carol Bowie Jackson and here's hoping you smell like dirt. Global warming, global warming, global warming, global warming, there you go. global warming, global warming. All right.